How to make the elephant sound. The elephant sound involves using brass technique, like as if you were playing a trumpet. So when they play the trumpet, they actually buzz their lips. So when you buzz your lips, you actually got to put them together and make them tight. You shouldn't be like making a kissing motion. You should be making a... When brass players play, they go... No, I am not singing. That is the natural sound from the air rushing out between tight lips. It's not a fart sound, which is... No, that's different. This is... I'm not singing. That is the sound of the friction. All right? So, as you know, brass players can play several pitches like that, going... I am not a brass player. I am a woodwind player, but I can still do some basic, really bad sounds, and that's fine. But, so brass players play an instrument, that's a brass instrument, you know, these are from like soccer and football games, right? Alright, so on the clarinet, I actually have a little tiny open hold clarinet, but it works the same. Alright, you take off the mouthpiece, and you can probably take off the barrel too. There's no barrel on this instrument, but your instrument has a barrel. You can you do it with the barrel or without the barrel, but without the barrel, you're playing against wood, which is a little easier on the lips. You can try it both ways. So you do the same thing, and then you play into the clarinet that way. Alright? changes the pitch a bit, but it amplifies the sound. Now, on the part, what it shows is a glissando. The glissando is not with your fingers, the glissando is with your lips. So you start with a higher pitch. You don't have to make it too high, but something higher that you can drop from. So, and you don't have to drop off right away. Like that. And then, you just do the tremolo as it's written. The I think it's G to E, right? And go... You might play like an elephant trunk. Not. It's almost like I'm wearing dentures or have no teeth. Now, for the didgeridoo sound on the clarinet, it's actually the opposite of what you were just doing. Remember how I said don't kiss or make a fart sound? Well, this place. You do want to make a fart sound. Now, the first thing I want to show you, you can naturally make a sound without singing by making your lips really loose, kind of in a kissy motion, essentially making a bum pee pee sound. <laughs> that pitch is not being sung. However, in this case, I want you to make the sound with your lips and sing. You don't really have to match the pitch. You just sing a low note somewhere around. In fact, you can wave it around and create some wonderful sound frequencies. So, uh... Now I'm going to do them together. That was separate. Ah, uh, two separate things. Now I'm going to sing and make that sound at the same time. I'm not making a Tibetan throat sound. I know it sounds like a Tibetan throat sound. Actually, it's just the sound of me singing along with the lips buzzing, but the lips buzzing very loosely. All right. Now, if you take the bell of the clarinet, you turn it around from before, and then you play into it like this doing the <laughs> sound and going mm, all together at once. <laughs> you could sing a higher bird. <laughs> if you're a woman, you'd sing it higher. That's fine. You don't actually have to match the pitch. You can sing different pitches. You can go around. The whole idea is more like circular. <laughs> And then you can move the instrument to kind of help the sound and to help yourself breathe. It's a little easier if you move and breathe it and pacing. You're basically covering your mouth almost fully, not exactly with the bell. It'd be a little bit bigger on regular clarinet, but you don't have to cover the keys at all. If you find it makes it sound better, you can cover the keys. It doesn't really make a difference. It's a little hard upside down.
That's how you make the didgeridoo sound. Again, to, re to review, you go like a fart sound with your lips. You're not singing to make that sound, but then you are adding singing, ah, oh, mm, humming, then together, and playing. Or, if you're a female, now, that should be combined with the flute sound for a better sound, and I'll discuss the flute in a second. Flute didgeri sound is very, very easy. All you have to sing is a low pitch in the instrument. So you turn the instrument towards you, like a ba -woo. By itself, it's not didgeridoo-ish, but if you combine along with the clarinet, it's easier. Now you can turn your flute head joint to do it. The problem is those notes might be hard to play, but if you can figure out how to play it that way, then you can turn the head joint. Otherwise, play like this, and then move the flute back. That's how you do the didgeridoo sound on the flute. This is the difference between the jet stream sound and the wind sound. First, let me demonstrate on the flute. The jet stream sound on the flute is simply by covering it, like a bawu, and you're going to go like this. And I'm getting a lot of friction from my teeth when I do that. So, I find moving the instrument helps me get into the sound more. I don't know, maybe it changes my throat too, so this might be a good idea. Now the wind sound is similar but different. Firstly, you're blowing at a different spot on your instrument. You are not blowing into here, but you are blowing into the keys. Now I tend to find there are two ways you can do this. One, you can blow into the open holes, almost like you're getting spit out of the hole. However, I tend to find if you flip the instrument over and blow into the edges of the opening, it's much better. Much stronger. But you can also do it here on the open holes. I think it's a little stronger here. What determines is how fast you can to move it. Maybe you can do another key, like the back key. Yeah, actually that works. So if it's easier to flip it upside and blow in here, now, I don't have a standard B-flat clarinet. All I have is a bass clarinet, but trust me, I've tried it on my bass clarinet. I've tried it on a standard B-flat clarinet. This is simply just an open hole a folk clarinet, but you can blow into the holes here for the wind sound, or the keys like this on the clarinet. If you blow through the side, it will sound very similar on the clarinet. So the wind sound is blowing into the keys, preferably the openings of the keys, or you can do the open holes on the keys, like on the clarinet as well. And the jet stream, which I don't think you're doing on the clarinet, is this way, and your purpose of going The wind sound, you're just going Thank you. Difference between tongue stop and pizzicato. They're very similar. Now, I apologize. I'm a composer who was formerly a woodwind player. I play mostly uh, ethnic instruments these days, and saxophone is what I was still good at. But I can still demonstrate to you the basics of how to do these things. Now, the difference between a tongue stop and a pizzicato, the tongue stop is literally when you tongue a note, you don't release the tongue. You go tap, tap. Because normally you can go tap, 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 tap. That's how you normally tongue a note. This is tap. It will sound terrible, but I'll do my best. I'm not removing my tongue. I'm just kind of forcing the air. Works on clarinet too. Kind of a weird, crappy, percussive sound. Yes. Now, pizzicato is a little different. Pizzicato, you're actually emulating the sound of a pizzicato. Doom, 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 right? Well, the way you do that is after you tongue the note, you let the sound ring just ever so slightly, but almost immediately after, you crush the note. You stop it. You can actually go tongue up like that, tongue up, or you can go tongue up, tongue up. You still remove the tongue after the initial tonguing, so you can either stop a note by tongue and then squeezing 
the your armature so the air closes. Maybe squeezing the mouthpiece on this, squeezing the air so it stops on the flute. Or you can immediately tongue again. Da -da -da. Or you can also, by the way, breathe in. Go don't don't. Whatever sound works. There's a little danger breathing back in, but so. My clarinet sound is terrible, but I've learned these techniques from professional musicians and they've demonstrated them for me and they can do them so it sounds just like a string instrument playing a pizzicato. Flute. My flute technique's not as good as my woodwind technique, my uh, reed technique, but you're basically dong, 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 dong. I tend to find the best method is like tonguing it and then putting dong, 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 dong. You tongue it, bring your tongue away, and then <clears throat> squeeze your armature so the tone stops. So it's almost like the natural ring of a, a string. Dum, 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 dum. Difference between tongue stop and pizzicato. Again, tongue stop. Da, da, da. Pizzicato. Dum, 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 dum. Thanks.